shields up iron breakers we here coming at you with another video welcome back to monster hunter rise and today i'm going to be bringing you my gun lance guide for the purpose of this tutorial i'm going to be starting us out with a normal shelling gun lance and all of the default switch skills equipped in case you guys have been messing around with the switch skills of the gun lance and you no longer remember which ones are the default they are charged shell hail cutter and quick reload so that is the most default setup that you have. And if you're picking up the gun lance for the very first time in the game, your gun lance is going to behave pretty much like this one with some minor differences because the current armor set that I have equipped already has some pretty decent skills for gun lance. As a matter of fact, if you look to the top left hand side, you'll notice that I have seven shells as opposed to the six shells that normal shelling starts with. That is because I already have a skill that gives me additional shells. On top of that, I also have artillery level 3, so my wyvern fire is going to have less cooldown than what you guys are used to, and I have evade extender 3, so my dodges are going to be a little bit longer. This is just to show you guys the potential of the gun lance when you start getting into um, when you start getting further ahead into the game, uh, and you guys get a better idea of how the weapon is going to behave later down the line. So now let's start us off with the basics, and I know that the moveset is fairly similar to World, but I want to make sure that I cover all of the moves for people that are starting their journey in Monster Hunter Rise. So, let's talk about the most basic things of the gun lance. If you press X, it's going to do melee attacks, okay? So whenever there's a melee attack involved, chances are it's going to involve the pressing of the X button. If you press A, the gun lance fires a shell. So, whenever it involves shelling, usually you're going to be pressing the A button. If you press ZR, you're going to block. So, these are like the three fundamentals of the gun lance. Melee attack, shelling, blocking. Now, notice that we've shelled three times, and therefore we've spent a couple of shells on the top left-hand side. If you keep shelling, eventually you're going to run out of ammunition. So, you know, at this point, if you try shelling again, it's not going to work. The way that you reload is you hold down your shield button, so ZR, and then you press A. Boom. You've reloaded. You're good to go again. You can keep shelling. Okay? Now, a very important thing uh, with the gun lance isn't even about mastering all of the different combos that we're going to be talking about. It's actually about mastering dodging, because dodging is what is going to enable you to either stay on top of the monster or get out of the way of the monster. And dodging with the gun lance is fairly basic. You usually want to dodge after performing an action. So after you poke or after you shell, if you press the B button to dodge, you're going to instantly dodge. But these dodges can be directional. So right there, I just pressed B, it dodged back. However, if I shell and then press right and B, you're going to dodge to the right. Shell, press left and B, you're going to dodge to the left. And an interesting thing about the gun lance is that when you dodge backwards, you can actually do a longer dodge if you perform it after an action. So if you, after shelling, press back and B, the jump is going to be significantly bigger. And I know that for people that are trying out the weapon for the first time, it may not seem like much, but it is. Here's your regular dodge, right? If after that regular dodge you press back and B, you should be able to tell the difference. It is significantly longer when you dodge that way. As a matter of fact, this particular dodge, um, which is the long back hop, I forget what the people what people call it, but uh, you can actually use it to uh, get closer to a monster faster. Say, for instance, the monster is all the way, let's see, over here. The monster's all the way over there, and you want to get there closer. You can actually turn around, back hop, and then long back hop, and you're instantly on top of the monster. You don't have to instantly master this particular technique, but it's just something to keep in mind as you, um, you know, as you learn more about the gun lens. For now, just focus on dodging wherever the direction that you want to dodge, and eventually the pivot hopping is going to be something that comes naturally. But just remember that a lot of the, a lot of the finesse of the gun lance is about dodging and not necessarily just being able to memorize every single combo. Okay. So try practicing a couple of dodges on your own just to see that you can kind of pull them off because usually you want to be doing this a lot when you're in the middle of a combo like you're attacking a monster. Boom, dodge. Okay. Now, other things that the gun lance can do. One of the most important things uh, in the gun lance for Monster Hunter Rise is the worm stake cannon. And the way that you do it, one of the easiest ways, I'll be showing it um, in other combos further ahead. But one of the easiest ways, just so that you guys can see what it does, is you spam the A button. So, shell, shell, and on the third one, worm stake cannon. 
And that is one of the highest damaging attacks of the Gunlance, so you basically want to be doing that on every chance that you possibly get. There are plenty of other ways to get to the Worm Stake, just keep in mind that Worm Stake is an extremely important skill. And finally, we have the Wyvern Fire, which is one of the Gunlance's signature abilities, and you access that by holding down ZR and X and A. It's gonna charge, then it's gonna do uh, that big explosion, and boom. That is Wyvern Fire. When you do Wyvern Fire, notice that the gun lens now is fuming. It's got that little red stuff on the tip. That means that it is in cooldown. And for Monsoon Arise, there's actually a gauge that keeps track of that cooldown. If you look on the top left-hand side beneath the Worm Stake indicator, you will notice that there is uh, a little gauge down there. That indicates how long before you can do Wyvern Fire again. Wyvern Fire is a very powerful attack. It has a pretty decent stagger value, so you want to be using it uh, whenever there's a decent opening uh, to hit the monster in the face. Um, another important thing about Wyvern Fire this time around is while you are doing it, you, it actually counts as you blocking, which is pretty cool. Now, a couple of more details about the Wyvern Stake are... Notice that when you use it, below our sharpness gauge now, there's a red indicator indicating that you do not have a Worm Stake, which means you have to reload every time that you use it. Otherwise, you lose it, and you can't use it until you reload your gun lens. All right, so that is the most basic stuff. Now let's start getting into some more uh, advanced techniques with the gun lens. So first, when it comes to poking, the gun lens can poke uh, very much like the lance in threes. So one, two, three, and then it stops. But shelling resets that combo, so you can go one, two, three, poke. One, two, three, shell, you know? You can keep doing this so long as you have shells. This is actually the old school playstyle of the gun lens. This is not something that you need to do all that often, to be honest, in Monster Hunter Rise. But it's just something that I like to tell people in case you guys are curious. You can also dodge to reset the combo. So it's just so long as you take another action, you can like reset that combo and keep it going. But again, this is not super important. It's just for you guys to know and get some basic notions of the, the old style of gun lens. Now let's talk about the new style of gun lens, which is the full burst. And it's been full burst for a while, but you know. So to get the full burst, uh, one of the ways of doing it is if you run up to the monster and you press X, you're going to do a lunging up thrust. So this is like uh, a little bit of a gap closer attack. It also does more damage than a regular poke. Actually, no, it th this do did it do less? No, it does more damage, it's just I hit a different hit zone. I was a little bit confused there. But anyways, it does more damage than the regular poke because the movement value is higher, it's gonna just deal more damage. But it has some follow-up attacks. If you press X and A after doing it, you get this overhead smash. Overhead smash opens you up for the full burst. So after an overhead smash, if you press A, you're going to do a full burst. Boom. After doing the full burst, you have two options for your combos. One of them is you continue the combo. If you want to continue doing more full bursts, you'll press X again, and you'll do a wide sweep. Burst, X, wide sweep. And then after the wide sweep, you once again are going to have some more choices. If you want to continue the combo, you're going to want to do what is called as a quick reload. So basically you do this, full burst, Wide sweep, and then you instantly press the reload combination, which is um, ZR plus A, and you're going to do a quick reload. After doing the quick reload, if you press X and A again, you're going to go back into the slam. X and A, slam. And you can basically keep doing this. Burst fire, wide sweep, quick reload, X and A, full burst, wide sweep, quick reload, X and A, full burst, wide sweep and you can you know you guys get the idea because basically the quick reload reloads your shells and you can just keep on shelling now a cool thing about the quick reload is you can do it after pretty much anything so like you do one shell if you instantly press the reload button you do a quick reload you do a poke if you instantly press the reload button you do a quick reload which is very good because quick reload also gives you access to the slam so in case you're in front of the monster and you don't want to be doing a lunging up thrust, right? You're like your right point blank and doing this, you might end up missing if your monster's a little bit small. So you might just want to like instantly get into a full burst position. One of the best ways of doing it is just poke the monster, quick reload, slam, full burst, and you can resume the combo. Wide sweep, quick reload, 
Oops, I did a worm steak there. Um, that was actually a little bit of a missed input because my controller is kind of crappy, so I'm sorry about that. But yeah, wide sweep. So basically anything that puts you into a quick reload, you can use that to go into a full burst. Now you guys are like, oh, that's pretty cool. But there are situations sometimes where you'll want to shell a monster in an area that is a little bit tougher than what you're used to. So like, for instance, in the back here of this uh, the Thronodon, you're like, oh, this bounces me off. That kind of sucks because that's not going to let me get into, uh, into a quick reload so that I can start doing uh, slam burst. In those situations, you can do a quick reload from a shell. So you can do shell, quick reload, and then the slam doesn't give a crap how much armor the monster has. The wide sweep doesn't give a crap either. So you can just, you know, go at it with your full burst combo. And that's uh, another way to get the full burst. There is yet another one, which is if you are close to a monster and you don't want to poke it and instead you want to do something different, you can also do X plus A, which is a rising slash. And from the rising slash, I'm pretty sure that you guys get the idea if you start spamming X, you're going to go into full burst as well. In case you guys are getting confused by all of the button inputs that I'm going through, if you just like rewind the video, you'll notice that in the middle of the screen, it's always showing the button inputs that I'm doing. So it should be fairly easy to follow along if you have any questions. Okay? So... Those are some of the many ways that you can get into full burst. Pretty much anything that puts you in this slam attack, you can go into full burst from it, okay? But now, like I told you guys, there's that very important attack, which is the worm steak. And like I told you, there are many ways to get into worm steak, and the worm steak is extremely important. So now that you know about the full burst combo, let's talk about deploying the worm steak after the full burst combo. So if you go into your full burst combo, Reload, overhead slash, full burst, and press A again, instead of X, it goes into worm stick. So immediately after burst fire, if you press A, it goes into worm stick. But there's more. Another way to get to it is you go full burst. Oops, sorry about that. You go full burst, press A, you go into wide sweep, and press X again, worm stick cannon. So there are two points in the full burst combo where you can worm stake. Keep in mind that worm stake is going to break the flow of your combo. So it's usually something that you want to do kind of as a finisher. Okay? So that's full burst and that's worm stake. And there's yet another way to get the worm stake, which is you can go from rising slash. And from rising slash, you basically press X and A and X and A again. It does a worm stake, but it does so upwards. So this is good if the monster is big, if the monster is right on top of you. But if it's a small monster, it's not particularly useful. And then there's yet another way of getting to worm stake. There's plenty of ways, and these are all kind of like ways that you have to keep in mind so that you start optimizing your combos. So there's a thing called charge shells. Charge shells just basically means instead of shelling by pressing the button, you keep the button pressed, and it will charge it that eventually shoot out. And notice that that particular shell did more damage. So regular shell, 24 damage. Charge shell, 37 damage. Another important thing is that you don't want to keep the button pressed for the entire duration when you're doing charge shells. You want to let go of the button the second you notice that the gun lens is charging the shell. Because it's faster. Okay? So here's a regular way you just keep it pressed. Takes a while to fire. Here's one where you let go immediately after it starts charging. Fires faster, and you still get the full damage. But why am I teaching you about charged shells right now? Charged shells aren't even that important for normal shelling. But the reason I'm telling you about charged shells now is because after you do a charged shell, if you press back and A, you're going to go into a faster worm stake. Back and A. Notice that worm stake was considerably faster. So like if you do a worm stake after a full burst, notice how that's a longer worm stake. Like there it comes. Mistake. Uh, uh. The animation is much longer, whereas if you do it after a charged shell, it is significantly faster. And with the worm stake being a very important, um, a very important move to use because it does a lot of damage, this is something that you want to know in case you are using, um, in case you are using any kind of shelling style that includes charged shells. But <laughs> there's more, and for the next one. We're going to have to get into the Silkbind skills. So the Gunlands has two Silkbind skills. 
One of the Silkbind skills is Hail Cutter, and the other one is Guard Edge. The way that you access Silkbind skills is you hold down the ZL button, which is the left trigger, and you press either X or A. Now, the one that we're going to be using right now is the Guard Edge. So that is ZL and A, and it does this. You guys are like, well, that's not particularly impressive, Rurikon. What the hell does that do? This is a counter block. And it is very, very important for you to master it with the Gunlands because it is a really good move all around. So let me show you what it does once we actually do it. So that right there sharpens your weapon if you are able to block a hit whilst doing it at the right time. You're probably going to need to be practicing the timings. It's a very good idea to come to the training room, which is where we are right now. Uh, make the Tetranodon uh, stomp and just practice it for a little bit to get the timing of it down. But naturally, if it was just for sharpening your weapon, it wouldn't really be that impressive. Not to mention, why would I be talking about it when we were just talking about Wormsteak? That is because if immediately after Guard's Edging you press the A button, you're going to do a quick Wormsteak. This is a very important thing and you'll want to be doing it as often as you possibly can because it's just a really good move all around. And the cool thing about it is that it is directional. So you can aim it in any direction that you want. You block the attack. So like, let's say for instance, let me position here. Let's say the monster was attacking you from over here. So you block it with guard edge, but then you turn to the right and you slam it. You just have to aim in the general direction that you want to do the worm stick. That's not the only counter that you can do with uh, guard's edge though. If instead of A you press X, you're going to do a slam, which opens you up to full burst and all of the other combos that you're already aware of. Yeah, that's Guard Edge, and those are, I think, all of the ways to get to Wormstake. You're probably going to have to rewind the video if this is the first time that you're playing this weapon to fully grasp and understand all of the different positions that you can get into Wormstake, because those are going to be very important depending on the openings that you have on each monster. So now let's talk about Aerial Gun Lancing, which happens whenever you jump off of a ledge. Whenever you jump off of a ledge, you're going to have access to different movesets depending on the weapon that you have. So if you jump off of a ledge and press X, you get the poke from the Gun Lance. Now in previous games, you used to be able to jump off the ledge and press X plus A, and it would go into a slam. Or in the case of Monster Hunter World, you would jump off a ledge and press the block button and it would go into a slam. That doesn't happen anymore. Because now, they've given us Aerial Shelling, which is something that was present in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, but if you've never played it, don't worry, it's not particularly relevant. Let's just say that jumping off of a ledge and uh, pressing X is not a particularly impressive attack, so it's not something that you really want to be doing. What you want to be doing is slamming down on the monster. So one way of doing that is, remember how I told you guys about the lunging up thrust? If you lunging up thrust off of a ledge, you're going to do the slam. So basically you have to do the attack before you jump off the ledge and you're going to go into a slam. That is one of the ways of getting to slam from a jumping position and then from there you can get to full burst like I told you about and you can continue your combo that way and so on and so forth, right? But uh, let's say for instance that you don't have the option of doing the attack off of a ledge, you're in a real hurry and you jump off the ledge and you're trying to get to the monster. Another way of doing it is you're going to shell mid air and then you're going to press X. So the way to shell mid air is you block, so like this, hit ZR mid air, it's going to shell. And then if immediately after that you press the X button, you go into a slam, which then you can do full burst, which are remaining shells, and you can go into your regular full burst combo. Do remember that in this game we have wire bugs, and I'm also going to be linking uh, on the top right hand side of this video. I'll be linking to my uh, wire bugs guide, which shows you all the things that you can do with the wire bugs. But basically, if you press uh, with your weapon sheet, if you press ZL and X, you get access to the same aerial move. So if you press X, you're going to do the aerial poke. And if you press ZR, actually, we did a slam there because I didn't have any shells. If you don't have shells and you do that, it's going to do a slam. But if you do have shells, Press the R and it's going to shell. And obviously immediately after that, you can shell into a slam, into a full burst. However, there's another thing that you can do um, while you're in the air. After you shell, if you keep the ZR button pressed and then you press A, you're going to do an aerial full burst. I know, there's a lot to take in with the gun lens. I'm sorry. Keep up. So, ZL, A, and that is an aerial full burst. Now, keep in mind, you can only do the aerial full burst if your current equipped switch skill is charged shells, which by default it is. 
if you swap the charge shell skills for the other one, which we'll talk about in a minute, the aerial burst no longer works. Okay? So keep that in mind. It's very important. I wish it did. And I honestly don't understand why it doesn't. But, you know, it was a choice that Capcom did. So, aerial full burst. Another interesting thing that you can do is you can actually stay in the air and continue shelling. So, shell, A, 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 A. You can continue shelling. And it basically keeps sending you up. That's not very useful, but let's say that you have a target like this one we have right here, and for some reason you need to shell exactly on the head. And so if you're like, if you're down here, you're not going to be able to shell on the head, you're going to be shelling on the belly, right? So let's say you need to specifically shell the head for whatever reason. Or maybe the monster is flying, and you can't reach it from the ground. That's where aerial shelling comes in. If you time your shells, you can actually stay in the air in the relative area that you are shelling at for as long as you could possibly want. ZR, A, 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 until you run out, and then you slam. Okay? So, keep that in mind. Uh, that is a, just a, another thing that you can do with aerial shelling, which is, uh, it's pretty fun, and there are a lot of ways to mess around with this, particularly once we start going into some of the switch skills that we have. There's a, a lot of really fun things uh, to do with this particular move. Let's just put it like that. Now, if you guys have watched my Wirebug video, then you'll know that you can recover from getting hit by a monster by pressing ZL plus B. And this is something that is valid for every single weapon. And when you do that, what's going to happen is something like this. Get hit, ZL plus B, and you can recover. You can recover in any direction that you want. But now that I've told you guys about the aerial potential of the gun lens, particularly if you shell mid-air, you can go into a slam, you can use this recovery to go into a counterattack. So, for instance, the monster hits me, and then I wire, wire dodge in its direction, and then immediately after you press the ZR button, you're going to shell. So that's like your counter, and you can go into aerial shelling if you want to, but obviously the ideal situation here will be to counter go into a slam. So shell, X, slam, full burst. So basically, you can not only recover, but straight up go on the offensive against any monster that you want. Just be careful, this is very much a high-risk, high-reward play, because if the monster is still, you know, aggressive, is still enraged, is still doing a lot of damage, you can just be wire-bugging yourself to get another beating. That happens to me quite often, by the way. I tend to just like be like, no, you hit me, I hit you right back, die! And uh, then the monster just keeps at it and beats the crap out of you. So just be mindful of the state that the monster is in before you do something like an offensive wire bug recovery. But, uh, you know, that's just a little bit more with the aerial gunland style, which is pretty damn sweet. Okay, so... Now you know, at least you should know, a lot of things about full bursting, wyvern staking, wyvern fire, and guard's edge, which is like the staple uh, silkbind skill for the gun lance by default, because you can't actually change it. Let's talk about the other silkbind skill that the gun lance has. And that is hail cutter. This is the default silkbind skill that you begin with, and it can be changed, so we're going to be covering both of them. So what does Hail Cutter do? Well, you press ZL and X, and your character does this flashy jump, then slams down, and you see that little steam coming off of the gun lance there. All of these things in this movement are important because this movement is doing two different things. Number one, it will reduce the cooldown on your Wyvern Fire in case your Wyvern Fire is on cooldown. Number two, it is going to reload all of the shells in your gun lance. So, say for instance, if I just Wyvern Fire this monster right here, and then for some reason, after the Wyvern Fire, I was like, okay, time to do a full burst. You do a full burst, but you get hit midway, and now you're like, your Wyvern Fire is on cooldown, you don't have uh, any shells, and it's like, oh, crap, I need to, you know, need to do something about this, need I to reload, need to see if I can get my Wyvern Fire back. That is what the Hail Cutter does. Pay attention to the orange bar of your Wyvern Fire, and pay attention to the number of shells that you have. Hail Cutter... Fully reload the shells does a lot of damage as you are hitting the monster down, and it reduces the cooldown of the Wyvern Fire significantly. Naturally, if you do a um, Hail Cutter, since it is a slamming motion, it is going to allow you to continue 
into your slam burst combo. So if you shell at the end of this animation, and then you go into wide sweep, you can continue your full burst combo. Like I said, any move that puts you into a slam lets you go into full burst. And full burst is very important for both normal shelling and long shelling, okay? Now, I want you guys to pay attention to something else. This Wyvern Fire right here, three times 99 damage. This is the same damage that wide shelling will do with Wyvern Fire, but it is not the same damage that long shelling will do with Wyvern Fire. And now, we're going to be changing one of the Silkbind skills, which is the Hail Cutter that we just talked about, for the other Silkbind skill that you can have using the Switch Skill System and the Ground Splitter. This is going to unlock later in the game if you're just starting out, so you might not have this skill yet, but obviously I'm going to be covering it so that you guys understand what uh, Ground Splitter is all about. Now, I've put the Tetranodon in slamming mode again because Ground Splitter actually has Hyper Armor, which is pretty damn sweet. So basically, if you do Ground Splitter, which is ZR and X, notice how we just ignored the stomp there. And you guys are like, but you were too far away. No, even here, you still get affected, right? But I'll time the Ground Splitter to hit exactly when the thing is about to come down. Saw that? You get hit, you take damage, but it does not stop you. Nothing can stop you besides dying if the monster hits you so hard that you die then that will stop your ground splitter but besides that nothing stops you another important difference between ground splitter and hail cutter is that while hail cutter costs two wire bugs ground splitter only costs one but that one wire bug is going to take a little bit longer to recover but personally that is still very much worth it because besides being an attack with hyper armor ground splitter also buffs your shells and your worm stake damage so if you notice right there our shells are glowing green and our worm stake is glowing green as well that means that right now we're dealing additional damage now if you remember previously our shells were doing about 24 damage i think now they do 30 and the charred shells were like 37 now they do 45 I haven't really done the exact math on this, but uh, I've done some testing and it seems that it's about a 20% boost in damage across the board. It's not exactly 20% because the modifier changes slightly depending on whether you are using long shelling, normal shelling, or wide shelling, but it does, it, it's about 20%, okay? That's the average uh, increase in damage for your shells. In case you guys are wondering, by the way, the shelling level of all the gun lenses that I'll be using here is shelling level 4. The maximum shelling level is shelling level 5. But uh, yeah, as you can imagine, a skill that basically increases the damage of your gun lance shells is very, very valuable, especially if you're doing stuff with shells, if you're actually using artillery and stuff like that. So, what else can Ground Splitter do? Because that's not all. Ground Splitter has follow-up attacks. So, if after you do a Ground Splitter, you press the X button, you're going to go into a quick worm stake. Now I got hit because I didn't time that properly, but if you were to time it properly, you'd get something like this. And very much like the other quick uh, worm stake that you can do with Adept Guard, uh, at Guard's Edge, I mean, you can uh, turn it around. So even if you go past the monster, so like if I do this, I can literally turn around and still worm stake him. You can completely pivot 360 degrees to do the worm stake in any direction that you want. So this is usually my opening attack on most monsters. I just straight up open up with a ground splitter. I just turned off the stomping because it was annoying me a little bit. I think you guys get the point. It's got hyper armor. But, um, so one of the follow-up attacks you can do is that wyvern stake. But besides that, there's another follow-up. So if after doing a ground splitter, you do X plus A, you're going to go into a slam. And just like every slam, you can go into full burst and you can go into full burst combo. Which is going to be pretty damn powerful. So, the idea to think about here is, uh, in terms of follow-ups for Ground Splitter, is like, is the monster moving fast right now? Is the monster exhausted? How, what is the monster state? And it's like, if the monster is still super active and being fast, you want to go for the quick worm stick. That's like, most of the times you want to go for the quick worm stick. However, if the monster is downed and you want to, you know, buff your shells and get the combo going, then in that case, you want to go for the slam into full burst and then you can do the worm stake after, or you can do it after the wide the, the wide sweep as well, depending on how big of a window do you think you're going to get. Gunlance is a lot about judging windows. A lot of the weapons um, 
are about judging windows so that you can know how much damage can I actually do before the monster goes away. And usually you want to time your worm stakes right, about, right as the monster is about to leave if you get a decent opening. Now let's change up another switch skill and we're going to change charge shells into blast dash. And Blast Dash is one of the best things that they could have done for Gunlast. Now, Blast Dash was already present in GU, but it was a little bit clunky in my opinion. It was not super easy to use, and sometimes it even felt unresponsive. Now, in Monster Hunter Rise, Blast Dash is a beauty! It is an absolute beauty. Basically, this is the same input as you used to do for charged shells, because basically you, no, you can no longer do charged shells if you have Blast Dash. But, you gain a lot of mobility, which considering how much of a kind of lumbering weapon the gun lance is, even with this improved evade extender, which is god tier, uh, it's still, you know, sometimes a monster can get past you. And using Blast Dash, you can go at the monster, which is pretty fun. Now, when you do Blast Dash, you have two options for follow-ups. You Actually, you have three options for follow-ups. You can either do another Blast Dash to advance forward, and you can change the directions of blast dashes, and you can chain up to three blast dashes in a row. So I can go wee, and then wee, and then one more. And it's pretty cool. So like, for instance, you guys are like, how is that useful? Well, let's say a monster is trying to get away from you. And so the monster just made this curve right here, and you're like, no, 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 buddy. You ain't going nowhere. And you get to the monster. Uh, and it's just fun to blast dash three times. In case you guys try blast dashing after you get to the third try, what happens is he's going to slam. But you can, basically practicing this, you're going to get a lot of mobility out of your gun lens. Now, like I told you, once you get rid of charged shells, you can no longer do the aerial full burst that you were able to do before. You guys remember that you were able to do the full burst if you held down ZR and press A? If you do that now, it's going to do a blast dash. Now, this particular blast dash is faster than holding down A while you're mid-air. So, like, to give you guys an idea, blast dash, hold down A. There's a little bit of a delay. Whereas, if you do it using um, ZR plus A... It is going to be significantly faster. So it allows you to do quicker adjustments to your blast dash for more precision. Okay. Uh, naturally, uh, that one of the options is following the blast dash with another blast dash. Another option is to do a slam, which will take you into full burst, and you can continue your combo as per usual. And the other option is to do aerial shelling, which is something that you guys saw me do in the review of the game, and a lot of you guys really enjoyed that. The way that you do that is you hold down A, and then you hit A again, and then you can even go into a slam at any point. But basically, you can do aerial shelling, you can do movement, you can do so many brutally satisfying things with Blast Dash that just makes the weapon so much fun that personally, once I got Blast Dash, I just was not able to look back at charged shells. It was just, it was too hard for me to ever look back at, uh, at charged shells. But yeah, that's Blast Dash. There's one more switch skill, but before we get to that, I want to talk about long shelling. Okay, so now we have long shelling. So what is the difference between long shelling and normal shelling? Well, if you look at the top left-hand side, you'll see the first thing is we have less shells. So normal shelling has seven shells, actually six shells by default. In my set, you have seven shells. And long shelling has four shells by default. And in my set, you have five shells. Now, first difference between normal shells and long shells, the range of the shell. The shells of, uh, of long shelling have much more range. As you can see, we're currently pretty far away from the monster, and we still hit it a bunch of times there. This is when we stopped hitting it, so we can hit the monster all the way from over here, which is pretty damn good. So that makes it easier for you to land your shells on the monster. The other thing is each individual shell deals more damage because it has less shells, therefore it makes up for it for those shells being by those shells being more impactful. Um, you can also use charge shells, even though right now I have Blast Dash equipped, just know charge shells also deal a significant amount of damage. Um, and in case you guys are wondering, but which combos do you go for? We're going to be going for combos after I go over all of the shelling styles and all of that stuff. But, um, 
pretty much I tend to use full burst in um, in Monster Hunter Rise. Because even though normal shelling is the best at full burst, long shelling is not too far behind. And it is not that far behind that I'm pretty comfortable still using full burst using uh, long shelling. Another thing about long shelling is that the worm stake deals a little bit more damage. And another thing about long shelling is that wyvern fire deals an extra tick of damage. So whereas with normal shelling you had three ticks of 99, with long shelling you have four ticks of 99, which is pretty damn sweet. But those are the main differences of long shelling. You have more range, your individual shells deal a little bit more damage, you deal a little bit less damage with uh, normal shells, and you have a better wyvern fire and a slightly better worm stake. The worm stake difference is like one more tick or something like that, so it's not that much. But still, it kind of makes up for the fact that your full burst doesn't deal that much damage. Which is uh, pretty good in my book. As a matter of fact, long shelling is kind of like my favorite shelling style for Monster Hunter Rise. At least up until now. Another thing is due to the fact that your, shell, your shells deal more damage, Poke Shell Poke is actually, um, I would consider it to be somewhat viable with uh, long shelling gunlets. Which means that you can do Poke Shell Poke Shell Poke Shell Poke Shell. Which, uh... You know, it's another option for your arsenal of moves, so instead of doing full burst, if the monster is being a little bit too fast, you can just go poke shell, poke shell, poke shell. And uh, obviously you can still use ground splitter, which is the ability that I tend to use. And boom, you can do your quick worm stakes, you can do pretty much anything that we have done with the normal shelling gun lens. You can apply that to the long shelling gun lens with the addition that you can also do the poke shell combo. You can also do poke shell with normal shelling, but due to the fact that the shells don't deal that much damage, I don't really like doing it all that much. So, you know, it's really up to personal choice if you want to try that out for yourself. I don't think it's very optimal, but you know, each their own. And now, let's change everything up so that I can show you guys wide shelling. So we're going to change the switch skills. Instead of Blast Ash, we're going to go back to Charge Shells. There is a reason why we're doing Charge Shells. And instead of Quick Reload, I'm going to show you guys Guard Reload. Now we're going to swap into a Wide Shelling Gun Lance. Which in this case is going to be Baryoth's. Baryoth's gun, um, gun Lance is Wide Shelling. Notice that we only have three shells. So, unlike the other Shelling styles, Wide Shelling Gun Lance did not receive an additional shell in uh, Monster Hunter Rise. At default, it starts at default with two shells, and then you can get one more if you use the skill that I have. So, what is the main difference between wide, long, and normal? Well, wide this time around has the strongest shells in the business. Boom, 49, sh 49 damage by default. It's pretty damn good. So, this one's good for doing poke shell poke, but your shells will run out rather quick. However, something that you definitely don't want to do with this gun lance is slam burst because it has a negative modifier to slam burst, and it only has three shells, so it's going to deal the least amount of damage of all of the gun lances when it comes to slam burst. It deals so little damage, in fact, that if you are playing wide shelling, I would say just straight up don't do uh, full burst. It is not worth your time, okay? So what do you do with, um, with wide shelling, then? Well, your charge shells are also the best because it has two levels of charge. Notice how it changes colors. That's the second level of the charge. Immediately after it changes colors, you can release it to get maximum damage. So, yeah. This is one of the things that you can do with wide shelling. You can also put some pokes in there if you want to, and then do, uh, you know, charge shells. In case you guys are wondering which one is the most optimal way to play wide shelling, I don't know. I have not played enough wide shelling because I just don't like it very much in Monster Hunter Rise. It feels kind of weird. However, the interesting thing about wide shelling is that its worm stake stuns. So if you do the quick worm stake, like I said, L plus A, uh, I mean back plus A after doing a charged shell, this thing does stun damage. Oops, I forgot to reload it. Boom. The monster is now stunned. 
So, you can actually stun monsters using this gun lens, but again, it is not my favorite playstyle. I need to, like, practice it more or something. But it is satisfying to stun with the gun lens. Another thing that you should be using with wide shelling, in my opinion, is that um, guard reload. Which, as you noticed, we no longer have quick reload. I replaced that particular switch skill with guard reload. Now, the cool thing about this reload is that it also reloads your worm steak. Whereas quick reload would only reload your shells, this guard reload also reloads your worm steak. And it gives you a guard point whenever you are doing this. So basically you can be doing this, and then whenever you pop this up, you're going to block the monster in case it is attacking you. Uh, the biggest use that I've found for wide shelling personally is I like using wide shelling in rampages because I just go up to the monsters and I just start spamming shells. Like, I don't even care. I'll just spam shells, do slow worm stakes, because usually rampages are such a chaotic uh, event that I, whenever I just need to go down there, I'm just like, okay, fine, I'll just spam shells and get my worm stake in, and boom, done. That's what I tend to do whenever I'm doing um, rampages, and that's the best use that I've seen for um, for the white shelling gunlets. I am not a big fan, but yeah. In terms of the different skills to use for each of the shelling styles, this is what I would advise. Uh, charge shells for wide shelling. And um, always, I pretty much use ground splitter for every gun lance because ground splitter increase, increases the damage of your shells. And as you guys know, I like dealing more damage with shells. So ground splitter is the one that I tend to use for just about everything. Uh, hail cutter, I think right now does not really compete with ground splitter ground splitter i just think is a better ability overall i could be proven wrong this is still like the first couple of days with people having access to monster hunter rise so maybe someone will come up with a different strategy than me but yeah so for wide shelling you i would go charge shells um ground splitter and guard reload and then for long shelling and normal shelling i like to go ground splitter and blast dash And quick reload because quick reload gives you access to slam so that you can do full bursts so this is what I use for both um, for both long shelling and normal shelling so now let's talk uh, very quickly about a few combos because this video is already way too big and I'm really sorry but there's just a lot of stuff to talk about when it comes to the gun lance if you have hail cutter ignore the first step of this particular combo but usually the way that I open up on a monster is like I go up to the monster uh, you know that most monsters tend to roar, so like maybe I'll poke them before I get started or something like that. Go up to the monster, poke them like once or twice just to get them going. And usually most monsters will roar shortly after you begin the fight. During that roar, I'll do ground splitter and I'll just hyper armor through the roar and then I'll put a worm stake into them. If the monster is downed at any point during the fight, I will do ground splitter into a slam, into a full burst... And then depending if the monster's about to get up or not, I'll do a wide sweep and worm stake cannon, or I'll do the worm stake cannon after, uh, immediately after the full burst. Those are like some of the basics. Most of the times, whenever I'm hitting a monster, I'm trying to get him into full burst so that I can do full burst, or I'm trying to find ways to get into worm stake cannon, whether that is through using guard's edge and blocking an attack and then countering, or, you know, just doing it after a full burst, uh... And yeah, that's kind of like the way that I try to go ab about with the gun lance. When I have long shelling, if I'm against the monster that's also very fast and is giving me very few openings, I do a little bit of poke shell poke to try and see if I can break something or get a stagger on him so that I can then go back to doing full bursting. With normal shelling, I don't really do that. I'll just poke him around a little bit. I might do, I might actually do a couple of poke shells with with normal shelling every now and then, but usually I tend to focus more on doing that particular combo whenever I'm doing uh, long shells. And naturally, you know, the thing that you want to be doing is full bursts and applying the worm stake whenever you feel the monster is running away from you. That's the way that I tend to do most things. Uh, if the monster gets too far away from you, then obviously you blast dash into him. If you do not have blast dash, like if you're playing wide shelling, then you want to do your usual 
uh, the the pivot hopping. You want to really master pivot hopping if you don't have blast dash. But personally, I just prefer having blast dash because it's just really fun to fly around on a rocket. So, you know, that's just brutally satisfying for me. So I just tend to keep it going that way. But these are like the, the basic things that I tend to go for when it comes to gun lens. Naturally, whenever there's an opening, I also try to pop in a cheeky wyvern fire. Uh, usually when the monster is about to get up from uh, getting hit, I find the wyvern fire to be a very good finisher. So say for instance the monster is down, you go up to him, you do a slam, full burst, wyvern fire, and then at this point if it wasn't on cooldown, I try to pop in a, um, a wyvern fire. Actually the thing that I did previously was worm stick. Sorry. Just too many too many technical terms but that's the way that i play both long and normal if you prefer using hail cutter go for it i personally just think that um ground splitter is much 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 more useful for wide shelling the opening is pretty much the same you ground splitter into worm stake i just don't really go for the slams then i do like a guard reload get the pokes to get in close do a little bit of poke shell poke I get the opening, do obviously a worm state cannon whenever I have the opportunity to do so. And if the opportunity presents itself, I might even try to do a couple of charged shells into worm state cannons, into quick reloads. And you know, but it's all about what opportunities do you have. And it's like, if you have enough of a chance to do a charged shell, sure. If you do not, then just do quick shells. Either way, it's still good. We now ran out of the ground splitter, so I'm going to do ground splitter here. I did a slam because we did not have um, the stake, otherwise I would have done the stake. But you know, wide shelling to me is all about poke shell poke, double shell, and charge shell, and always try to squeeze in the worm stake whenever possible. Preferably in the head, because it stuns. I think wide shelling is going to be something that works better in groups and i know that some of you guys at this point are thinking okay but maybe we should put some focus three on that on those charge shells from my testing in version 1.1.1 of the game which is the version we're at right now focus has no effect on charge shells if you guys come to a different conclusion then please inform me but from my testing there is no difference whatsoever between having focus or not having focus which is weird because charge shells should count as a charge attack so I don't know why it works like that. And then finally, in terms of general recommendations for Gunlands when it comes to skill, uh, I would advise you guys to... First, I would actually prioritize a Vade Extender, because I think it's in this game it's even more important than Artillery. Obviously, you should try to get Artillery as well, but a Vade Extender and Artillery are your bread and butter. You will definitely be wanting to get those two skills maxed out. Like, if there are only two skills that you can get, those would be the ones that I would get. Artillery and Evade Extender. Another skill that I would recommend is Guard, because having a little bit of Guard is going to enable you to sometimes just take the hits from attacks and Wyvern Fire through them, because you are blocking while you're doing Wyvern Fire, so that's very useful. Um, so Guard is something that I would advise as well. And naturally, Razor Sharp. These would be, like, the most important skills for me right now as a matter of fact uh in my current set right now i have defense boost seven this is just because i get like defense boost three and i have a lot of tier one slots available which is what defense uh gives you uh i'll have artillery and evade extender like i said the two most important skills and i also have speed sharpening because my set also has one point of speed sharpening and a bunch of different um a bunch of different tier one uh slots um, another skill that I would consider is load shells, although that one, uh, you know, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Maybe for wide shelling, it might not be as important, but definitely for normal shelling and long shelling, what load shells does is it increases the amount of shells that you can have. And then, you know, get your razor sharp if you can. I have like one point of razor sharp. And obviously anything that does melee damage is also good for the gun lens. So stuff like critical eye, attack boost, and all of that. But, you know, those are good for pretty much every other weapon. Uh, I would consider artillery and evade extender to be your top priorities. And right now, after experimenting with the palicos, in my opinion, one of the best type of support palico for the gun lens is the assist palico. Because, you know, it brings traps, it brings stuff that, stuff that keeps monsters from moving too much. 
Uh, it's got some interesting tools uh, to help you out with, uh, with keeping the monsters in place and beating the crap out of them. Those are just my recommendations. This video is already much longer than I've ever intended, and it's also the third time that I'm recording it because the second time the video file got corrupted. So hopefully this helps you guys, and I'm very sorry that it's this long, but there's just a lot to discuss when it comes to the Gunlands. If you have any doubts about Gunlands or if you feel that I've missed something, please point it out in the comments, and uh, I'll try to answer any questions. And... Uh, yeah, if, the, if I find out that there's stuff that I'm missing, I might do an addendum in the future. But for now, this is it. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you did not enjoy this video, hit the dislike button. Feedback is important. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.